glad in it. Let's say that one more time out loud together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the service of Healing and Hope here at Central United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Clint Lambeth, and on our piano is Scott Stone, and we have two technicians that are in the back. We're grateful for them uh, being here. And um, right now, as before we start our silent meditation and our prayer time, uh, I would like for you to do something for me. If you have a Bible and a few candles that you can sit around and just build an altar wherever you're at, maybe it's in the kitchen or the living room or the bedroom or a spare room, and make this a special spot just for you and God tonight. I know that when Kim and I lived in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and the boys were real young, an ice storm blew through that area, and we couldn't have church. And so uh, Greg and Matt and Kim, they built an altar and a, a congregation there in our living room. And they had their action figures and their little toy guns, and they had their uh, stuffed animals and... Uh, I was lucky enough to preach to them that morning. I think it lasted about three minutes because they got to fidgeting. And, but they built an al altar, and I'd like for you to do the same. Tonight, we are going to mention uh, some folks. I know that Kim sent out an email, uh, and if, if you want uh, their name mentioned, please give that to Kim or myself, and we'll be glad to mention them. And we're going to light candles for them during our prayer time. Let's all remember the Frank Schaus family and the Frank Menapace family, Bud Pittman, Keith Zorn, Sharon Nations, David Babbitt, Myrna Dolance, Mike Moss, Mary Lou York, Carol Johnston, Michael Brockett, and Jeff Crum. These are folks who are that need prayers for healing and for comfort. So will you join me in prayer? Gracious Holy One and loving giver of life, we bow before you tonight wherever we are in humble adoration of you and for your humility and your greatness. Lord God, all through the periods of time, people have done what we're doing tonight. Maybe not in a building, maybe not in a house, but maybe out while they were watching sheep, or maybe they were walking on a journey somewhere, being led by your stars and your moon. So Lord God, we come before you, an anxious people, a people who see the news that it's not getting much better. But Lord, the one thing that we are grateful for and that we can hold in our hearts dear tonight, and that is your presence is near to us. Lord, bring instances to mind tonight of gratefulness and the gifts that people have given us. For the food that we have received that wasn't asked for. For the kindness of a motorist who let us in traffic when we needed to be in there. For the infectious laugh and a smile of a little one. Lord, help us to be grateful to remember those times tonight. Lord, will you unlock our nervous hearts right now? and soothe our worried souls as we pray to you. Because God, you are the answer of prayers. You're the balm of Gilead. And you're the one who takes our prayers as a gift to you.
with you. Let's turn to James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Those who stand firm during testing are blessed. They are tried and true. They will receive the life God has promised to those who love him as their reward. One more time, and let these words sink into you and go into your soul deeply. Those who stand firm during testing are blessed. They are tried and true. They will receive the life has promised to those who love him as their reward. If any of you are under pressure and need a word from God tonight, this is your verse. The Reverend Dr. Charlie Dates, who is the pastor of the Progressive Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois, told a story in a sermon entitled, Too Soon to Quit. And that story goes something like this. In 1952, a famous long-distance swimmer named Florence Chadwick attempted to swim that 26-mile distance from Catalina Island to the mainland of California. And as she made her preparations, now she was a pro. She was not an amateur. She was no rookie. She knew what she was doing because she had swam the English Channel twice in record times. But as she slipped into that cold water, the air was chilly, and the fog was so thick that she could barely see those two little lifeboats that were going to accompany her on this journey. There were shark sightings in those waters before she entered. So she had a lot on her mind, you might say. The elements were pressing against her concentration. Her body was ready and her will was on tap to do this magnificent feat. And so she swam four hours, and then eight hours. And as the fog grew thicker and thicker, she could just barely see her hand in front of her face. She started to get tired. Ten hours, twelve hours she swam. And she started to become exhausted. Her mother, who was in one of those lifeboats, yelled out, Florence, Florence, honey, keep going. We're almost there. And she tried another hour, two hours. And she finally decided that she just couldn't make it. Florence, honey, we're almost there. Keep going. But mom, I can't go any farther. So they lifted her up out of those cold, chilly waters into the fog. And after she was through and she was uh, on the shore in California, she went into an interview with reporters and they asked her what it was like. And she said, it was so cold and foggy I couldn't concentrate because I couldn't see where I was going. And she, sa she said, if I could only see land. If I could just see that little bit more, then I probably could have made it. 
and come to find out that she was just a little over a mile left to go in her journey. She could have made it if she just tried a little harder. But my question tonight is, can you relate to Florence Chadwick? No, we aren't professional swimmers. I doubt if I could make it as far as the lake over at King Jack Park without needing help. But maybe, just maybe, tonight you are lost in a fog of this pandemic. Maybe you are foundering in the ambiguity of this political circus that we find ourselves in. Maybe you're sick and tired of masks. Maybe you are sick and tired of people who won't wear their masks. But I am here to say, and God is here to say, that it is too soon to quit. As we pray tonight, let us think back at those old stories that we've heard from the Older Testament. How God led his people through the waters of the Red Sea on dry land. Some of them said, I just can't make it, but Abraham said, oh no. Moses said, it's too soon to quit. We may be in a time that we'll never see again in our lives. But the author and the finisher of our faith is telling me and telling you tonight that it is too soon to quit. Jesus is there with us. Let us not give up. Let us think of those times of, that we can be grateful. I don't know if you've done your homework yet, but we've sent something out to go along with our gratefulness sermon series. Think back of something that you didn't ask for that someone gave. And how did that make you feel? Tonight, thank God for that. Because we can look at the fog of deep waters. We're familiar with what's going on around us because we've spent eight months in it. But when you can't feel the bottom anymore, always say to yourself, it is too soon to quit. God is near. Let us pray. Author and finisher of our faith, we lift up to you those nurses and doctors and everyone who have their hands in the medical field tonight that you'd give strength to their hands and encouragement to their souls tonight. Lord, they're tired. And some of them can't go on. Lord, I pray that you would whisper in their ear tonight, wherever they're at, it is too soon to quit. Don't give up. You who are the author of our strength. Lord, you've told us all through the Bible and these old stories that you give strength when ours give out. And Lord, when we say we can't go on, that's when your strength comes underneath us and lifts us up. Lord, we pray for those in leadership, our elected officials, Lord, we have no idea the burden that they are under right now. Where every decision is in dispute, where every decision that they make is second-guessed, 
Lord, I pray that you would give them sound sleep and strength and wisdom right now, no matter what party they belong to. Lord, give our governor strength. Give our legislators the wisdom and the insight to do the right thing. And Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for their experience and for their desire to make this a better country. Lord, help us to be constant in prayer. And Lord, as this music plays over us, soothe our souls and make us quick to pray to you for our brothers and sisters.
Amen. Thank you, Scott. As we enter into our time of our agape meal, you can take common elements around your home, bread, crackers, juice, or even water. This is a meal that brings us together. When the whole world seems to be bent on tearing us apart, this is something that holds us together like none other because it's something that God has said is special. So let's thank God and take this meal. We thank you, God, that you have provided for all the worlds that ever were or ever will be by giving yourself to them in love. If we go to the heights of the mountains or if we make the grave our bed, you are with us. If we go to the depths of the sea, your right hand holds us fast. We thank you for Jesus, our word, your word, who lived among us, uncovering your presence wherever he went. We thank you that you stamped his death with victory and that life, not death, was the final word. We ask now that you bless us as we share this agape meal together, that we might be nourished by that same unbounded love and so be encouraged to be your servants to the world. Take, eat, and drink. Jesus. And now, as your daughters and sons, whom you have reconciled to yourself, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This concludes our service tonight. Thank you for joining us. Always remember, never give up. It's too soon to quit. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you how that story ended with Florence? She went back shortly after, and she swam that 26 miles, and she swam it again in record time. God bless you, because so will you. Amen.